This presentation in financial markets and institutions gives a general overview of financial crisis. I am Pat Obi, Professor of Finance at Purdue University, Calumet. It begins by explaining that financial crisis occurs when there is a collapse or potential for collapse of a financial entity in a way that threatens the stability of the entire financial system. So in essence, anything that threatens the safety and soundness of the financial system is a shock that can lead to financial crisis. Such a financial entity could be a bank, an insurance company, a corporation or even an individual. With respect to a corporation, some may remember long-term capital management back in the 90s. Uh, it was a hedge fund which nearly dragged down the entire Wall Street, but for the timely intervention of the Federal Reserve. It could also be a sovereign nation, which is a situation that um, um, has been taking place in Europe and uh, on account of the Greek debt crisis. So a more technical definition of financial crisis is provided here courtesy of uh, Mishkin and Ekins. Now though, the key feature of a financial crisis is its systemic impact on the entire economy. And so the relationship between financial crisis and systemic risk is the reason why this aspect, this type of shock in the financial market system is considered to be extremely um, important um, in terms of its uh, potential damage to the entire economy. Now, systemic risk is in the sense that the failure of such a financial entity uh, in and of itself may not be a crisis. However, if it threatens the entire financial system, as was the case with AIG in 2008, and many even feared Lehman Brothers, which was eventually allowed to collapse, or the U.S. auto, com uh, auto industry, um, which uh, President Obama uh, refused to allow to collapse, um, if such failures are believed to be to significantly threaten the stability of the financial system, then we have a crisis. So such a financial crisis um, could lead to a bank run, especially if it is one that's provoked by banks widespread bankruptcy which we saw happen in 2008 and 2009 especially in the manufacturing and financial services industries widespread default on debt and insurance obligations that happened a lot and shortage of liquidity which we called liquidity crunch between 2007 and 2010 it could also lead to a collapse of the financial sector which but for the intervention of um, the $700 billion uh, bailout package that President Bush signed into law in 2008 um, nearly happened. And of course, weakness in the entire economy, which we saw unravel before us in the years um, after the, collapse, after the uh, collapse of the mortgage industry in 2007. So a little bit about bank run, which typically occurs when there has been a collapse of the financial uh, of the banking sector is provided there. So this slide identifies events occurring often in the early stages of the financial crisis it may include financial liberalization, basically extensive uh, excessive deregulation. Uh, we saw that happen in the early 80s and again in the mid to late 90s. Uh, credit boom and low interest rates. This definitely happened between 2000 and um, 2007. Um, anybody who wanted to borrow was able to borrow at very low interest rates and liberal loan terms. You heard uh, or watched um, commercials that would um, tell you bad credits, no credits, no problem. Many banks were willing to lend regardless of your credit history and credit score. 
mismanagement of, of financial risk, which occurred extensively in financial institutions. Uh, they didn't really care so much about the quality of the loans they made. They were more concerned about the volume of the loans that they made um, during the 2008 financial crisis, well, in the period uh, leading up to it rising credit risk, of course, because a lot of people who borrowed uh, were unable to sustain the loans they took out. And so we saw that um, there was a high rate of personal bankruptcies and then asset price bubble. This we saw especially um, in you know, during the dot-com bubble of the 1990s, but also actually uh, in 2008. In the period leading up to it when stock prices were at an all-time high so there was a bubble of uh, which um, former Fed chair Dr. Greenspan would refer to as irrational exuberance and then high economic growth the economy grew but it was unsustainable growth in the later stages though after the crisis has occurred, we have rising uncertainty, which often leads to a recession, uh, rising interest rates. That didn't happen in the 2008 financial crisis because the economy was pretty badly depressed, and so there wasn't any money, and no one was willing to, uh, was able to actually take out any uh, money to make any investments, let alone buy consumer items. Rising market and credit risk premiums risk premiums would increase on account of uh, the high, the rising probability of default and actually rising default rates. And then you have the asset price bust which occurred in 99-2000 when the dot-com bubble bust. And also with respect to the housing sector in the United States in 2007, you know, when uh, the housing market collapsed, losing about 60% of its value. Then banking crisis, which occurred extensively in 2008, 2009, and also 2010. Lending restrictions began uh, leading to what's called deleveraging, which I explain here occurs when banks cut back on their lending due to high loan losses and a reduction in net worth. So um, this had a more uh, streetwise term, um, which is uh, we call credit crunch. And um, decline in economic activity overall, that's recession. All right, and here I explain a little bit about the relationship between currency crisis and sovereign debt, which was a type of financial crisis that occurred in Southeast Asia back in the uh, back in the 90s. So I, ex I explain here that when a country with a fixed exchange rate regime is suddenly forced to devalue its currency that this may lead to a currency crisis, a type of financial crisis. And this type of currency crisis um, is specifically a balance of payment crisis. How so? Well because the, the country would devalue its currency on account of the fact that it is unable to maintain the fixed exchange rate uh, 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 regime. And therefore, by devaluing its currency, it would then cost the country more to pay for imported goods. And of course, when the country fails to pay back its sovereign debt, because now its currency has de has been devalued that would lead to a sovereign default so a little bit of a background here um, as I'm gonna mention a little bit more later in 1997 especially which was the peak of the crisis many Southeast Asian countries and some Latin American countries had their currencies pegged to the dollar but the dollar rose significantly and unfortunately those countries weren't able to keep the peg going because their currencies couldn't rise in the same way that the US dollar was rising since the US dollar's uh, strength was grounded on the strength of the US economy. And so in the circumstance the peg that those countries maintained could not um, 
uphold. And so suddenly their currencies came crashing. More will be said about that um, a little later. But here's a quick summary of some of the recent financial crisis, beginning with the Mexican financial crisis in 94, and then we had the Asian contagion that I mentioned, and more will be said about that, but this is uh, the a currency crisis facing uh, many of the countries in Southeast Asia, um, including Thailand, the Philippines, Indonesia, South Korea, etc. And then we had the Russian ruble financial crisis. Um, shortly thereafter and um, um, President Yeltsin tried to print more rubles so as to make payments but unfortunately that drove the value of the ruble down and uh, causing the currency to lose virtually any value it had. And then additionally we had the Brazilian financial crisis and one that has continued to rear up its ugly head every now and again is the Argentinian financial crisis. It began in 2001, continued into 2002, and even more recently, um, I believe um, in 2013, yes, in 2013, that came up again up on into 2014. And then we had the U.S. mortgage crisis. Uh, Actually, that was specifically in 2007 that it came to a head, and that precipitated the global financial crisis in 2008, and it lasted up until 2010. And that, of course, um, uh, gave rise to what many now call the Great Recession of 2008 to 2010. And then the European debt crisis, which began with a uh, the countries we refer to as the pigs, uh, namely Portugal, Ireland, Italy, Greece, and Spain. 